Hello, my friends at Samuel's Public Library. I thought we would have another story time since we're all at home spending time with our families. And some of you remember our friend Fancy from visiting and sharing story time with us. So Fancy is happy to be with us and is going to listen to our story too. Fancy the Flamingo. So you're going to need to sit and listen too, Fancy. Yeah. All right. So, happy Easter, and I have an Easter story for you. Our friend Minerva Louise, we've read other stories about Minerva. She's a little silly. Minerva Louise and the Colorful Eggs by Janet Morgan Stoke. Last time, my granddaughter said it was hard to see the pictures, so I'm going to try harder for you to be able to see the pictures. Minerva Louise loved the springtime. With all the colors, the farmyard looks fresh and bright, and Front Royal is certainly looking fresh and bright, isn't it? The apple trees looked so beautiful, all in bloom, and so did the farmers. Remember, Minerva calls all the humans farmers. Hmm, maybe I'd look pretty too if I put on a hat, said Minerva Louise. Hey, who put an egg in my hat? You poor thing, where's your mother? Minerva Louise warmed up the egg with her fluffy feathers. Then she looked around. She couldn't find its mother anywhere, but she did find another egg. She worried it might fall. She also worried that she might fall. Some hen is forgetting her egg, said Minerva Louise. And I can't warm all of them by myself. She ran to the barn to tell her friends. Look, she said, I'm finding eggs outside. And some of them are so cold, they're turning blue. The hens grumbled at being woken up, but they were curious. No one had seen blue eggs before. They went out to look for the eggs but they were all gone. Where did the eggs go? asked Minerva Louise, but the little brown bunny didn't seem to know. I bet you know all about the little brown bunny. And she couldn't get an answer from the baby chicks either. Wait, she said, look up there. It was an egg, but this one had spots and green stripes. Then all of a sudden it was gone. A little hand had snatched it up. There were farmers all around, running and laughing and picking up eggs. The hens felt better. They were used to farmers picking up eggs. They went back to the hen house for a nap. But not Minerva Louise. She had found the perfect nest. We like Minerva Louise. She's kind of silly, but she's fun. Thank you for listening. And I wanted to show you a little craft you can do at home with graham crackers. So at Christmas time, I know we made a, a, gin, a graham cracker house and decorated it for Christmas. So um, this time we made a little peep house. So you can just use things around the house to decorate it and use kind of springtime colors. So I hope you can have fun doing something like that. My second story is not really an Easter story 
but it is still a fun story. It's called Alistar's Elephant by Marilyn Sadler. Alistar Griddle was a very busy boy. He had no time for nonsense. He worked very hard at school. When he knew the answer to a question, he would raise both of his hands. He was very neat and tidy. He cleaned his room every night and slept on top of his covers. Alistair also found time to play. He was very careful to choose games that exercised his mind as well as his body. Every Saturday, Alistair went to the zoo because that was the day they offered a special admission rate for children under 10. Alistair was thrifty too. Thrifty is a fancy word for saving your money. On Saturday, when Alistar was going to the zoo, it threatened to rain, so Alistar took an umbrella. When he got to the zoo, he decided which animals he most wanted to see. Then he studied his zoo map and walked quickly and stopped only once for a chocolate bar too small to spoil his dinner. He set out for home only after he had thanked the zookeeper for a most enjoyable afternoon. He has good manners, doesn't he? Mm. When it began to rain, Alistar was glad he had taken his umbrella. He was nearly home when he realized something quite surprising. He was being followed home by an elephant. That would be surprising, wouldn't it? The zookeeper will be very worried about you, cried Alistar. You must go back to the zoo. But the elephant wouldn't go. Alistar was late for dinner, so there was nothing he could do but let the elephant follow him home. You can't keep him, shouted his mother from the window. Alistar didn't want to. He didn't have time for a pet. So he called the zookeeper and the zookeeper checked his records there was a hippopotamus missing, but not an elephant. Are you sure he's not a hippo, he asked. Alistar was certain. There was nothing Alistar could do but eat his dinner and hope that the elephant would leave. He was so upset he couldn't eat his favorite vegetables. Poor Alistar. The elephant didn't leave that night, nor any night that week. Alistar had a very hard time sleeping with the elephant at his window. Even though Alistar got up early, the elephant got up even earlier. Alistar didn't have any privacy. He had to dress in the closet. The elephant followed him to school and caused so much excitement that everyone had to be sent home. Alistar did not get to take the arithmetic test he had studied so hard for. The elephant ate all of Alistar's houseplants, as well as his science book and his stamp collection.
Alistar tried to teach the elephant how to behave. The elephant did get a little better and even gave Alistar some privacy. On school days, the elephant learned to stay at home. On Saturday, however, Alistar took the elephant back to the zoo. He just didn't have time for an elephant every day of the week. The zookeeper checked his records again and found a mistake. He had been missing an elephant after all. He thanked Alistar very much. The elephant was very sad. Alistair was a little sad, too, but he promised the elephant that he would visit every Saturday. Then Alistair left for home. It had been a busier week than usual, and at times it had been fun, but he was very happy to be going home to his quiet, tidy room at last. and he could get some work done. Uh-oh. The end. Thank you for listening to the story, and I look forward to seeing you soon. It shouldn't be long. And I just want you to know that May 1st, we are kicking off our Early Bird Summer Reading Program on Beanstack. So have one of your folks uh, look on Beanstack and you can start putting your books in for rewards on May 1st. Happy Easter. Take care. Bye-bye.